Hi everybody, my name is Zeke Torres and this presentation is part of the SAS Global Forum 2020 topics titled Customize Output with the SAS Config File. I live in Chicago. I'm a SAS developer. I've worked with SAS for over 25 years. Uh, I'm a dad. I'm into big data. I work with local user groups, regional groups all across uh, the globe and have a great time not only talking about SAS but networking and meeting other individuals who are passionate about solving big data issues and analytic issues in general. So our goal today and what we want to do and accomplish is make our lives a little bit easier by improving the information we get from our SAS logs and list output. Typically what happens is we end up getting a variety of files from when we run our SAS jobs. They can become pretty tedious and difficult to work with. It's important because our logs tell us about what happened in the work that we did. They help us debug things. They help us optimize our code and our process to improve the performance. And we get a history of what happened, but oftentimes it becomes pretty tough when we're trying to determine who ran something, what they did. Things get overwritten. And if you're working on different projects that are kind of the same or share the same SAS code naming, things get overwritten as well. So we basically end up having more work and more effort in order to get some of our jobs or our, our, our projects done. So our typical log and list ends up becoming a series of detective work type of questions. Who ran something? Did they run it for a production purpose or were they testing something or evaluating something? What, when they ran some job and we do have a log or a list, was this for a specific project or a portion of a project? And then there's a component of time. Well, when did this log occur? Even if we have the file date and timestamp on the operating system, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's when it happened. And so typically, somebody's going to end up asking, why didn't we save this information somewhere? And especially if we're using Git or some type of version control, either individually or as a team, the log and list become very useful, but we're hindered by the fact that they're not named correctly. So to me, an ideal scenario is that the log and list would have a time and date stamp, but in a more useful way. It would also be ideal if the log and list had the person's ID, the person who ran it, the person who executed that job, so we can see what they were attempting to do and identify who that person is in case we wanted to narrow down our search for questions about what was being done. And then did they, what was their intent? Did they run this for production? Did they run this to test something? Or did they run this to review somebody else's work? Um, and of course, the actual name of the code, right? That's already a default with the, the SAS log and list. But you know, we're missing some of the facts. So. Some other ones that could be added if you were ambitious is you could probably add which server it ran on or some of the data facts. Like if you had a specific job of a dot SAS that ran on monthly data versus quarterly data, maybe that's a fact we can add to this process. And so I, I won't get into that level of detail, but at least you'll be able to see what that looks like. And so this is a rendition of that ideal scenario where here with my cursor, what I'm showing is that we've appended in a, in a sequence starting from the left the year, the month, the day of the month, and then separated by a consistent underscore, the hour and the minute, followed by another underscore, which then gives us the user. And then whether or not that user ran something in production or in test, and then the actual name of the original dot SAS that was the target of this process. And so what that does is it gives us the ability to organize our work a lot better but not our work as in the dot sas, more of our work is in the results of what happened. So let's look at what we need to do to set this up. And I've done this in Windows and Linux, and I've done this in, uh, for example, in a, uh, that's a configuration of a SAS Studio Edition, but it did take some work, so I'm, I'm going to publish that separately so that it, it is uh, encapsulated cleanly as far as what we can do with SAS Studio. Uh, but the ideal scenario is that this will run in batch mode. Um, and if you're not familiar with batch mode, uh, what we'll do is we'll end up having links in the paper that describe how to get that done. So the paper does document 
the details that I'm describing here. So you're going to have to become familiar with SysParms. The SAS paper that I've submitted to this process also describes that. And you're going to have to learn a little bit of macros and data null steps. But it won't be that intense because the code in the paper and on the GitHub repo for the SAS Global Forum Conference is already functioning and works. Um, and in any of this, when you do set this up, I highly recommend that you make the appropriate backups of any files that you've got um, just so that you have a way to put things back in case you find that you're not happy with the, the setup or that you want to evaluate the configuration differently. Um, you have a way to start. So I encourage, and I'm saying this for full dis, uh, disclaimer, that you must back things up before you start uh, you know, configuring and changing them. So the overview concepts is we're going to adjust the configuration file. That allows us to modify the proc print to values. The proc print to function in SAS helps us direct and redirect what the dot log or the dot LST come out as. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to capture that process as early as possible when we hit submit. The SysParm allows us to modify and capture values like the user ID, the date, the time, and other facts that we want to push into the new values of the proc print to. And then the macro that I've described in the paper combines all that for us so that we end up with a cohesive new name to that. So one of the reasons why this is useful and why I've adopted this method is because even if I'm working individually, but more often I'm working in a team, it becomes a lot easier to create a historical tr uh, tracking of what jobs I ran to get to the current state of my work. I also share those results by pushing them and sharing those logs and lists with my other team members. And so they now have a chronological and a succinct and standardized way to find those facts. Specifically useful when we use Git as a team in our team-wide usage. So this year's paper, because this is a follow-up to 2019's paper, this year's paper in 2020, what I've covered is a recommendation of how a team could structure their folders for projects. And so in any project that we have, we're typically going to start somewhere, somewhere on a laptop or a desktop or a server that's going to hold our projects. And so under that, we're going to have subsequent folders with many projects and what those levels are really aren't important in this part. The next one is under a specific project, in this case we're saying project A, I found it very useful to have a code folder. That code folder will hold syntax. That code folder is meant to hold our SAS code and only SAS code in a subfolder. Our R code and only R code in a subfolder. And the same goes for Python and the same for SQL there's a new folder or a folder that I strive to have team members collaborate on and it's a universal syntax folder and so the purpose of those folders are when we're dealing with a specific syntax like SAS or R or Python then those should hold only dot SAS or only dot R or only dot PI or dot SQL code SAS code ideally will only have SAS syntax but if there's ever anything like an if statement or a where statement or something that could be useful as a .txt because it holds values like state abbreviations equal to the state long name, then those should go in the universal folder. Because files like that or syntax like that is really agnostic. It could be something that our R language could use or our Python language could use. So it's really a universal component that any language could use. And so if we start to structure our code that way, our SAS code is SAS-centric, our Python code is Py-centric, but we still have the need to actually put our output somewhere. So that wouldn't be in the code folder. Our output would be somewhere else. And our source data would be somewhere else. This layout, this configuration of folders, works well with Git because our Git would be at the highest level 
And our logs and our output and our source data would be symbolically linked. They wouldn't actually be hard coded or hold data at that level. We could symlink to different paths and with dot git ignore, we could protect the integrity of the repository and only focus on protecting our version control methods for the code that we have. So in that sense, a developer can work on that project, have a log output and source data symbolically linked, whether it's on their laptop or on a production server, but their code actually is part of that Git repository. And so as they start working with this process and creating SAS logs and other uh, output that we want our team to track, that work starts to go and get pushed up to our team repository, whether it's on GitHub or GitLab, a developer individually can work on either their SAS work or their PI work or their R work and whatever the results are, right? For, for this presentation, we're saying a SAS log or a SAS list, but you know, PI has similar types of output that could be generated as well as R, or they can be configured by those team members who want to emulate that same type of log and list mentality. But because it is actually a agnostic component, right, the result of a process, well, that would go into the team log folder that could then be shared by the team to understand what took place. So I would love to see and follow up with everybody what they think of this idea, how you customize this idea, and how you created similar features, not only with SAS, but maybe with Python or R or SQL, to, to find ways to actually integrate it better with Git. I'm looking to collaborate with people who are using Git and SAS and other languages to actually improve our coding and project process. Because at the end of the day, if we are spending more time hunting our code quality issues versus actually solving the problems, you know, then we're probably doing it the wrong way. So I'm eager to hear what people think. Um, the code on GitHub is uh, functional and works. If anybody encounters any issues, I'd love to, you know, to tackle it and, and solve it or maybe improve it. So I hope this really helps everybody. You can reach me at my email. Uh, this is my LinkedIn contact as well. I'm busy with things with the Windy City SAS Users Group. That's wcsug.com. Look me up there. And I hope to see everybody very soon at user conference events for SAS and other conferences as well. Please help your local, regional, and SAS global conference teams to have a great experience. And everybody stay safe and see you soon.